Hey guys, this is Mason Bush with Code Hunting University Podcast. Welcome to the show. Coon Hunting University is brought to you by Conkeys Outdoors, hunting and hound supply store. Find out more at conkeysoutdoors.com and Superior Hunting Lights. Superior, step up to the max. Use discount code CHU Podcast at checkout and receive 5% off on nighthunters.com. If you're in the market for a new dog box, go over and check out GNR Cedar Dog Boxes on Facebook or go give Gavin a call at 615 930 six two five two six six hey guys this is part two of grinners to winners featuring Dwayne boyd hope y'all enjoy well i was getting back to handling dogs for harold at the time and and uh he had bought a female come out of kentucky they put supposed to be in the real he give i don't know back at back at that time i think he gave 4500 for her which don't sound like nothing now but back then it was Good money, you know. The Vinings, a lot of people probably remember them. Old, old Gomer and Chirpy, they, they was wanting her. And Harold ended up somehow another got her bought, and uh, we got her down here. She had a couple of wins toward Grand. Harold wanted me to finish her out to a Grand, and so it, in the meantime, we had been hearing about a dog that people know: Philip Strickland, Temple Cody, and Keith Dean. I always called them the triplets. And, Love them to death. They, they're fun as they can be. Crack, you know, sit around and let a dog trade me. And they ain't one of these crybaby type, you know. You may come up, you come out on the good end this time. And next time they may come, you know what I'm saying? They, mm-hmm. They're that type. They know how dog, how it works, you know. Well, and, and they were trying to keep it hid from me. They, he was from their area. And old Philip was messing with me. Yeah, that dog down here last night scored five something. And I was looking for a dog. And I had sold Dan. And I had $3,500. That's all I had. Like I said, I, that's me and my wife, early marriage, bought our first little, little house. Uh, you know, I, I could come and go, do what I, it wasn't like I was just broke. But, you know, I couldn't just go get. Four five thousand uh, dollars. So uh, we go down to Tuscaloosa, and uh, Harold wants me to hunt that little female in in the uh, in a UKC hunt, and then we're gonna go just go hunting afterwards. So we we get to drawing out, and as a as a guy there that I never seen before, just got to talking to him and. Told me he was from down Clanton and he hunted a little lot down around Alexandra City and it got my mind running, you know. I thought, I wonder, is this that guy that Phillips been aggravating me about? You know, don't he don't want me to know what dog it is because they gonna get it. And uh, anyway, well, guess what? It was him. It was him. I drew out with him on the cast. So we go down there, river bottom. Over across the river from where I was telling you, Harold can hunt, which is a, this place is a good spot too. Tommy Hewitt hunts black and tan. He, you know, probably know Tommy. Yeah, he always kept good, good black dogs. It was his spot, so they took us in there, and uh, we got we cut them dogs. And I don't know. They got stuck. And Clyde just peeled to the right in there, and just he toward the end there, he had lost way over half his mouth but when he was at, at this time he had a, a big mouth I'm talking about big and man he come on that tree this boy handling don't know nothing this first dog he's ever owned ever not even a puppy nothing he just got this dog and it come from somewhere around Mark Summerall Wimp Aaron over there mm-hmm. they knew the dog when he was young well Clyde goes on and scores four by himself. The the boy, like I'm telling you, don't know nothing. He trees frogs one time hmm. and argued with us that it was him. But anyway, Clyde has scored four, I think it was four singles, and, tr- and we found him treed with the fifth. And I was the closest dog to him with a hundred plus. Hmm. And he had six something. So uh, I get back 
up to the club. I told her I was man, I said, hey, this, you know, this dog's put, put a show on tonight. Now, whether he does that regular, I don't know, but he sure looked good tonight. <clears throat> well, Harold wanted to see the papers on him. So they brought the papers. Harold got to look at him, and he did have a good set of papers. And then Harold said, well, let me see him come in. And old Clyde had these old yellow-looking eyes, and Harold started laughing. Well, one thing about him, he'll never make a stud, though. <laughs> I can't, can't no way. I said, I ain't worried about it. I something to win with, you know. Right. So I get to messing with the boy. He said $7,000. Well, that was my head. Head of it. My head, yeah, that's all I had <laughs> and had. And I thought, I can't do that, you know. And Harold ain't really said nothing, and I didn't ask him at the time. So uh, we go on, end up going on home, and uh, I I knew the triplets down there, Philip and all of them, they they was going to buy him eventually if they was really another time or two. And uh, next day I called Harold, and I told him, I said, man, I said, uh, I can't get that dog off my mind. I said, uh, you know, we need to, we need to check this dog out. So, Harold said, well, get us a hunt up with him. So I said, All right. I said, I will. So, call him up. Yeah, we'll go Monday, Tuesday night, something. I don't remember exactly what it was. And, uh, told Harold, you know, yeah, we'll go. So we, we go down, meet these boys. And you know how when you're going into Montgomery and you're crossing all them bridges, mm-hmm. when you start seeing Montgomery, they take us up under that bridge where all the swamp water right there comes up. That's right there on 65. Right on 65. That's loud. Right. Yeah. They drive us under that bridge and out there on the edge of that field. And I mean, you know how when you buy a highway, you can't hear nothing. Well... They ain't never hunted this spot neither. <laughs> That's how I'm telling you, these boys didn't know they didn't know nothing about coon hunting. Well, they they cut Clyde, <coughs> cut Clyde and some other dog. Well, <clears throat> Clyde, if he got in water swimming, he would chop. And that boy would say, and he was treed in there. Well, we'd start walking that way, and I I'd, I'd be like, that dog's moving. Well. I've done weighted water, and it's getting deep. Get on in there, and he said, hey, he's tree. We start either moving to the right or left or whatever, you know. And uh, finally, I'm aggravated. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of taking his word that he he, he really thought he was tree. But once I, once I owned Clyde, I knew when he would get in water, his chop would be a long chop. Oh! Oh, oh. But when he was treed, it was, oh, 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 oh. You know, just a chop, shut it off. Bam, bam, bam. And um, so I finally, he's done got out of here now. They don't know how to get to him. They don't know what to do. I had to work the next day, so I go back to the truck, and I told her, I said, I'm ready to go. I said, I've seen enough. I said, this dog ain't worth killing. We leave laughing. I mean, literally laughing. So, we go back home. I don't know, a week goes by, and it's it still, I'm thinking, man, that dog, that, that one, cat, you know, it's just got me still. Mm-hmm. Come to find out the boy is getting a divorce. He hadn't told me. She's really handling him, and he's needing some money. <clears throat> he calls me. He calls me, and he said, uh, "I know we looked sorry the other night, or whatever. I don't know what was going on, whatever." He said, "If you want him today for four thousand, come and get him." I had thirty-five. I couldn't. I couldn't come up with five hundred dollars myself, which was better that I didn't, as I tell you on here. Uh, so I called Harold. I said, "Look, I said, there's something to this dog." Harold, I'm telling you, I, he, 
things he did just think, I don't know, you know, it's just, I, I, I said, I'm willing to take a $2,000 chance if you want to take one with me. He said, let's go get it. I get off the couch and I call a little boy and we take off down there and Harold's, Harold's got one of them uh, forward mark, some kind of mark, one of them fancy ones, two-wheel drives, got all the ground effects. I don't know what he, he 65 year old with a, <laughs> you know what I mean, this thing. And we meet that boy on the side of 65, right there out of Monk. No, we was at Prattville. Uh, we stick Clyde in the back seat. That boy got on the interstate, headed to Georgia. He's getting a divorce. Went, moved all the way to Georgia. So we get we get him, get to get to hunting him. You know, we found out quick we had something. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, <clears throat> he was just I don't. He was just natural at everything he did. Just basically, he now he was crazy. You couldn't hardly catch him. You got him treed somewhere, but he did everything quick. Uh, you know, it was just, there was no downtime. You know how some dogs will, might treat that first cone and then they just kind of loaf. loaf around mm-hmm. for the rest of the hunt. You knew if you got a coon right out of the truck with Clyde for a good score, you was going to get one more. Now, it might be a long ways off somewhere, but if he could get that first one close, he was going to get a second. A lot of times, if you didn't get that first one, he was going to be so far that you wouldn't get score a second one because it took you so dang long to get to him. So we get to hunt him, and like I was telling you about the Bonnie and Millie female, I mean, we would go try dogs, and I won't name the guy's name, but we go try this dog. Uh, you know, like I said, at this time, all I really know much is, is UKC. I, I haven't really hunted much. I had hunted PKC since 83, uh, but not a lot, you know, just when I didn't have nothing else, nowhere else to go, I would, you know. But uh, we had Bonnie and Millie want to try this dog out. Well, they they treat six or seven coons. Them other dogs, they they actually brought two dogs with them. The male dog I was trying, and a female, a little grand night, which I could have never done this. But one of the one of the younger boys come over to me and whispered to me. He said, "Hey man," he said, "See if he'll put them two females up. Let us turn our dogs loose." <laughs> Mm. That's how bad it got. Mm. Well, old Harold, he wants to show out, you know. He's kind of let them back loose. Now nah, he 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 let them. So we let them cut their dogs loose, and after about an hour and a half of them boohooing, and they get treed in there and go in there. Big tree can't find nothing. Come back out, and I, I guess they they done got their feelings hurt now. You know, they're kind of they're kind of quiet. They're not really saying much. So. Mm-hmm. So, no smart, but Harold, he said, hey, boy, he said, let me show y'all how a dog's supposed to treat a cane. Come on. We put her around there. Now, Bonnie ain't but 18 months old, something like that, but, but she was she was nice. He, he said, I'll just, I'll show y'all. I'll just turn this little old pup loose. So, we turned that pup loose. Bonnie, okay. <laughs> She went out in the bottom bowl, she hit a cone, and she went to running it up down that bottom, across the bottom in there, across a big slough. Wham! So I said, David can get out of the truck. Not go with me. So I know now they're mad, probably, you know. Mm-hmm. They just stay back there in the truck. Well, I was just going to go get the dog and come on out. Shoot me now! Harold shot everything. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, shoot that, shoot it up. So uh, I thought, dang, I, I, you know, hey, I go on in there, shoot it out, get back up there. Harold, they're sitting behind behind us, and I ain't, I don't like being, I might think it in my mind, everybody thinks, 
to you, how you know, boy, it looked good. Well, I don't want to rub something in your face. And, but Harold, he was put it up on the tailgate. And, and that's how way that dog was supposed to treat a coon, boys. <laughs> they ain't saying nothing. So we load up and come on out of there. But So when we get Clyde and start hunting with them two bitches, he could hold his own. Yeah. He, he, and not, he could take care of them. Uh, you know, he he was first and first somewhere or whatever because he, he just, he had this desire just that was just unmatched. I, I heard him talking about uh, Zeb and them and, and, and it's, you know, when you see it, they, they not many, but you see them uh, every now and then. But he just had this, so much want to in him. Uh, it was just, I don't know, it was just, at that time, now I've had a couple, like old Pete, like you know how Pete, but me and you got her, you got him now. It, about half crazy, but they got that, that's just something they got, you know. I want them half crazy. Yeah. And uh, Clyde taught me more about coon hunting than probably anybody. He taught me what 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 you got to have to win with. Mm-hmm. You know, I might not get right to what he was, but he, I knew I knew where that level was. You know that that was the level I'm wanting to get. You know, all the other dogs that I've I've owned. I, I that was where I wanted to get, and uh, so we got to. You know, I never thought about running for no kind of big hunt. You know, I mean, I was going to hunt him. I would have probably, without Harold, probably Clyde would never been known. But because Harold helped me and pushed me and, and, you know, made me realize what I had and uh, encouraged me to go in and you know, don't get down, you know, lose a cast, don't, you know, and I, I learned that you're going to lose a cast, I don't care if you got the, and you, y'all know, you got the best dog out there, no, I don't care what it is, you're still going to get beat. Mm-hmm. They're going to have, you know, just like you hear people talk about Michael Jordan, he scores 50 one night, and he's all, Michael Jordan's always going to get 20, but, you know, he might get 20 the next night, that, that's with a dog, you know, uh, and and these independent dogs, you know as well as I do, you turn you turn four of them, and, and your dog went the right way, and he goes two hundred yards there, and he runs right up on one and ambushes him, and mine goes this other way, and and don't get stuck for a mile. Mm-hmm. I mean that ain't that ain't the dog's fault. It's right. just the way it it's the way it rolls, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you remember? First pro hunt you ever put him in? Yeah. Sergeant was having a pro hunt. I got one in at that time, didn't know to buy two. I don't know much about PKC, this or that. I, <clears throat> well, I take that back. When I got to the pro, I, I had hunted him see the year before uh, and won the open division with him. And how that got started, I we were expecting first kid Logan mm-hmm. and uh, Logan was born on October 17th so you see how that falls for world hunt time so not too good no I was going to go hunt one night myself so we let another boy that used to hunt hunt with, with the boy that owned Clyde that we got from taking and uh I think he drew out with actually drew out with Zeb, and uh, they both treated coon. I think Zeb had two hundred and Clyde had one hundred and seventy five, and got to raining, and that's that's how the cast ended. So the boy come back home on, on Friday or whatever it was. Well, uh, you know Jimmy Lambert. Mm-hmm. A lot of people probably remember Jimmy. Good good handler. On Saturday, well on Friday. Actually, when that boy gets back with Clyde, we go pleasure hunting. Just me, Jimmy, and Harold. Jimmy had a dog that was just loved all my dealers. <laughs> and I mean, he loved them. And we get down there in this bottom, and 
Jimmy's dog would be left over here a hundred yards buried up in on a dead and cloud to be right with a coon. We'd go over and beat on him a while and get Clyde shooted out or whatever, turn him back loose, same ordeal again. About three times, same deal. So <clears throat> Jimmy and a couple of his buddies was going back, you know, at, at that time, PKC had, uh, on that Saturday night had a big open hunt. I mean, they'd be 200, 225 dollars hunt. Well, Jimmy said, y'all care if I take it? It was fine with me because, you know, Logan was, I had just had Logan, actually. And, uh, you know, that could give me a day or two. I always felt like on Friday and Saturday night, I, I was going hunting. Rain, pouring down, it, it didn't, you know, I thought if I didn't hunt, that dog wasn't going to do nothing. It would just quit on me or something, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah. he, So, I, Jimmy takes him. And, uh, dang, if he didn't go up there and won the whole thing. <laughs> 638. So, Jimmy's like, man, y'all need to run this dog. Run him, run him for state. Let's see if you can win the state with him. Well, I didn't really know the ins and out at that time of what you know, state, we got to talking, and I said, all right, so I take him the next weekend up to uh, Madison. It, that was always a good place as you get up there in the, in the Joe Wheeler, and if you could get Clyde in them big bottoms, you could keep up with him. He, he just seemed to, that was just his place. <clears throat> so I go up there, pick up hundred and something dollars or something, so, you know, I hell, I'm sitting here with Jimmy wins a when a truck gets him a truck ticket off of that one hunt. So uh I start hitting the hunts and, and most people probably on here never never believe this, but I can give you a list of everybody around here that I can hunt with and they'll tell you Clyde was never took out of the pen until Friday and Saturday night. Except now take that back. If if there was a Holiday maybe that you's off on the third and you can hunt Thursday night, but other than that, Friday night I worked the shift. I, I had to be at work at four, and never knew what time we'd get off. And uh, so, and I didn't want to get out and be trying to chase that dog, you know. But never took him out of the. He was only hunted on hunts on Friday and Saturday night. So I get to running him, and uh, I didn't know. Call my, I, I got to kind of uh, friends with uh, David Carr. Had an Elmo. Had Elmo. He's running. He's got a pup, but you know, as everybody knows, a pup can still win the mail and the pup. Mm-hmm. Well, mine's out of the super states, and uh, me and. Me and Carr get to talk on well, he you know, him and uh David and Ronnie were buddies and they run a lot as Barry Kitty was talking on one of them podcasts with y'all, you know, and Billy they were talking about coma and I think they called that female gin room or something. Now, there's a female that <clears throat> that they ran that and but thirty seven hundred was the record at the time. It's, now it's crazy what it is, you know, but there's a hunt every Monday night. If you want to go to a 50 somewhere, right. you can go, you know. We didn't have it. So, uh, I didn't know what the record was and never even you know, never thought about it. But, uh, we used to get to, we get to running him and, uh, ended up that year, just me telling you hunting Friday and Saturday night and if people want to go back and get to probably can call PKC and see it. I'd actually like to see it myself. I may do it myself just to see. Uh, he won forty seven hundred and fifty something dollars. An open event. In open. And I'm gonna tell you, he had he had that one six thirty eight. And getting back to his being tough and all. I took him to the Sunshine Jamboree, and a lot of the older guys will remember this was a big PKC hunt. They would hunt 200 dogs a night, for, and and the UKC Winter Classic was 
just up the road. So that's when the sun shot everywhere he was in Georgia. Georgia, right? yes. So it was a it was a big thing, you know. So I took him over there, and he had split his one of his nails, not not like down that way, uh, like if you just to take it and slap down on the end of your finger, it was split in like sliced it. And it would pick up. Mm. And you could just see the meat. It would pick up all the way back up to your knuckle. And it, it was just flopping. Well, I took him. The boys that won the national with the Adios Eagle two years in a row. One of them had an old man that he, they knew him. He guided. I don't know this, but they claimed I was going, they said it was a sorry play. I'll tell you why they ended up. So anyway, we go over at this place, and Clyde's nail was tore. He's limping on it. Score seven hundred. Oh wow! Yeah, he. I remember. I think he treated five, and that old man come back telling them two boys like he said. I could hear him treat. He was treating them coons everywhere. You know, <laughs> that wasn't really his style though. Clyde was a just a <clears throat> cast winning type dog. Now he could treat a bunch of coons, but most of the time it was because he was so far off. Walk, walk, walk. Yeah, so uh, that kind of runs the that oak ended up winning the mail. So the next year there, I decided, man, I, I ain't doing that again. That's that's it's rough on me. Right, so you know, I'd have to literally three o'clock when I punched the clock, I would run to the parking lot to get in my truck hard as I could get to the house because some nights there wouldn't be nothing in Alabama and I'd have to go to Georgia or edge of Tennessee, Mississippi. You know, Saturday night I could get there, but Friday nights was hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, I ain't, you know, it ain't worth it. That, that. So I, I said, let's start hunting the bigger, let's hunt the pro hunts, you know. So, all right. We, we breed the Bonnie female to Clyde right there around the world hunt time. We get I don't remember how we got got to talking to Al Nunman and they had wild time and I'll never forget this about wild time is Barry Kitty, Clay Young I know them two and somebody else they were saying that dog's going to win the world hunt PKC world hunt but what are the odds of me saying Old Joe over there is going to win the PKC World Hunt. They had hunted with her. They knew how bad that bitch was. <laughs> and and I thought, you know, well, guess what? She won it. She won that thing. Well, this is what set Clyde off for breeding. Was right after she won the World Hunt, they bred time to Clyde. So I guess people probably seen that where well, the world champion got, you know, so it, it helped. So I need to really thank them. I don't know what kind of deal Harold and Al had. I know they had some deals on some pups, and I don't know how that. So I don't even I don't know that situation. But Al is always he's, he's every time. And, but he came down. Let me get back. Go hunt Clyde in that in that Sullivan Pro Hunt. Al comes down like that weekend. I had go down and listen to the dogs for a little bit on on a Thursday night. Go back, hunts on Friday. Like I said, I only had one entry. Can't remember what happened on that first cast with, with him. I won that cast. Well, the next night I drew out and I drew the biggest, scariest looking man in that building. I'll never forget it, man, to this day. Junior Jackson. Mm. And a lot of people can probably tell you he's, he was intimidating. Just looking at him, he scared you. Just, you know, I'm 25 years old, 26, and and I'm six four, and he's he's taller than me. He just, I don't know, just scary looking, <laughs> you know. Well, I drew him. You remember who else was on the cast too? Yeah, Elmo was on there, and Bubba, Kevin Robertson was on there. Conkey's Outdoors knows that keeping up with the latest in hunting technology can be expensive. That's why they are proud to offer amazing financing options from 30 days, same as cash, to 0% interest for 6, 9, 12, 
and even 18 months, depending on your credit score and the amount you spend. If you've been eyeballing that new thermal or want to upgrade to the latest in tracking system technology, go find out more on the web at conkeysoutdoors.com or if you're in the Hastings, Florida area, stop by and visit. They'd love to have you. Conkeys Outdoors, Houndsman, helping Houndsman. So uh, we get out on the cast. We're back after after we won the national. Actually, Beller and Dave Jubers had called Harold trying to buy Clyde, and uh, I never talked to him. I had seen they had called my phone on. You know, didn't have no cell phone back then. And I'd seen it on, I'd got one of them little ID boxes or whatever they were, and I'd seen it. I didn't think nothing of it. I thought they didn't leave no message. So I figured it might be about breeding or something, you know. So I couldn't find out they were trying to buy Clyde. And at that time, I told, I, you know, I was having, I was 25 years old. Top of the world. Top of the world. Just national leader. Just, yeah, had a, and, and, you know, I had never had money. And I got a pocket full of money to just, Harold just say, go have fun. I didn't drink, didn't do drugs, never was, you know, I was always back on Sunday to go to church, that way ever service. I mean, I was just, will you imagine? I mean, I, I want to go, if I had some new light, I'd just go over and buy it, you know. And I didn't have my, never had, you know, I always had to, I didn't want that, I'd have to save or whatever to get it. Mm-hmm. Well, so, you know, I'm just sky high. Like I say, me and a lot of people remember this dog. Jimmy was hunting Gouger. He was the real deal. That's the same one Bubba bought him later on. Later on, sure did. Same one. Gold medal Gouger, I think, what he ended up calling. When you drew him, you know, I never, I didn't hunt with him later on, but that whole pro division, Larry, when I hunted, you knew you just going to have to probably go through him. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I'd get him. I could not get away from him. It was going to be me and him every time. But let me tell you what scared me. So we cut loose there, and they all four dogs just poof, got out in front of us, 100 yards. <clears throat> every one of us was tree, and they're all split. Gouger had first and first. We go in our him, he got a cone. We go to Bubba's dog, he's got a cone. We go to Carr's dog, he's got a cone. So this little boy guy, and I guess here's this for a little break I got. I, I, I didn't I ain't gonna lie about it, but I know it I hadn't treated I hadn't treated that's right. I had a tree Clyde, he's still running. But I knew I couldn't let them three I knew all three of them dogs were good dogs. And Gowder's got two hundred so I know I've got a tree too if he don't take no minus. And I'm thinking, I cannot let, let them get back off the leash, you know? Mm-hmm. So we walk out there to turn loose, and I wait as long as I can wait. And like I was telling you earlier, how Clyde would get in that water, and he would chop. But it wasn't a tree chop. Like you, once you hunt him, you'd know. And uh, so I wait, and right, they got their hands on their collars, and I treat. So I get him to move, and I took JJ. So he's 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 younger, and a lot younger. And uh, we're walking, in, and we're around an old beaver dam, and the water's just <sighs> make you know, and you can't hear good. And I told him, I said, I eased over to him. I said, uh, keep as close to this water as you can, as long as you can, okay. And next thing I know, he's got us out. In the, I didn't want to get in the middle of it. And he got us out in the middle of it. <laughs> but anyway, we walking in that water, and, and old Junior and David Carr both, Judge, I, that dog, I think he's moving. Well, uh, it was Sean Trammell was judging us, and he we'd stop. I'd say, no, nah, he's still you know, right through, right through there, you know, whatever. And uh, we start walking about that time when Clyde just rolls up in there. Bang. So I told that boy, I said, all right, we can go now. <laughs> we go in there, he's got a coon. So we we come on back out there, we cut again. And right in front of us, they hit a deer. 
Well, I, I get struck for 75, but mine ain't running. But they're three, buddy. Let me tell you what they are. They would go out of here and to our left and come back into here and to our right. I, am near, I mean, they are smoking. We hear this dog tree down. We're in there on that river road. Big bottom. You know where I'm talking about it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people probably haven't been in it. I know they have. As a dog gets tree, way, we hear a dog tree way through yonder. Well, they start putting pressure on the tram and saying, it's my dog. Well, the hell, it would have been a mine out of the tree because I, I had the tree. Mm-hmm. I can't win. Galper still got 200. They argue around there. Well, finally, that dog quits that tree and four or five minutes go by and Clyde opens up way behind us. They wanted to say, yep, he, he's left that tree in here and he's come in here now, which wasn't true, but he ends up, he trails in there a little bit before the cast is over and gets treed. We don't even know where their dogs are. They're gone. <clears throat> so Hunt's time's over with and they all decide they're going to go back to the truck, go get their dogs while we go go to Clyde. So the judge... And a uh, little guy goes with us, and um, we get in there, and I got to have a coon, and Joe Devine got a coon. When we get back up there, Junior scared me out of me. <laughs> so we, I'm in, I'm, I'm in my truck, I, and we see him coming down the river road, and you know how it's kind of straight in there for a lot of it. Old Junior pulls up beside us, and uh, I'm driving. He's in Trammell sitting in the passion. He said, Did he have a coon? Trammell said, Yeah, he had a coon. Man, Junior stomped that truck ahead, the, stomped the gas pedal. That thing went side, sideways down the road. He jerked it back and it went the other way. Now I am scared to death of this <laughs> man. We get back up to the club. You know, buddy, of our dentist Taft. Another boy, and I told him, I said, man, I said, I don't know if he, that, that man over here, he, I don't know if he's mad at me or who he's mad at. I said, but don't let him get on me. <laughs> he's a big man. And uh, both of them laughed. Oh, we ain't messing with him. And, uh, but I ended up, he got friends with, with Junior. You know, he was just, that's just, he was, he was competitive. Man, he, Scared me that night, you know. I had that long hair, ponytail, just just scary looking. Mm-hmm. But it ended up got my, that put put me in the final cast. Drew a, do, a dog from over in Mississippi named Mew, and he was he was pretty. They had four dogs on nursing in my cast, and I reckon they fought every tree. All four of them were known to be rough, and I reckon. Well, old Mew's foot was tore up. He was limping, but he won the cast. One of Dawson's blue kicks was on there. And another little old dog from Coleman named Jack. I'd hunted with him on the same time. Anyway, we get out there, cut out. Dirt three get out there. We, we in a, we're on the edge of Mississippi. They said the line was right there. I mean, we're walking across it back and forth. Ends up, blue ticks is a coon. Now he's winning the cast, and I, you know, I'm not throwing off on this dog, but I had drawn him a thousand, not a thousand times, but you know, it was just I was a child with nothing. <clears throat> anyway, had Coomer was Jackie Coomer was judging the cast. Well, that was along the time that uh, Brian Owens was big into into it. He just bought. Cracker, he bought awesome man, he put all this money. I mean, you know, when he he come over, he's man at Comer, he said, uh, I want I, I didn't want to go with that dog. He said, uh, you care if I ride with you? I said, Oh, come on, man. Anyway, we get get over and it's getting down toward the end of the cast. I ain't even heard mine. Well, the blue tick has took a quarter minus and he's got a hundred hundred plus. Ten minutes or so, I, we barely hear Clyde through there. Whoop, 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 whoop. I get him struck. He don't 
open just a few times on the ground rose up tree our tree so they was like man he's across some they called it a river I thought we ain't gonna get scored I said you know I gotta have a team to win whatever but so they take us walking and then they they walk us out of here and we walk way around and we're in Mississippi now walking and we get around over there and the boy that run Sergeant Club, Ronnie Scott, and this was something else that, you know how things just fall your way, I guess. And uh, we start in there toward Clyde where we get to that, what they call river. It's a big, big creek to me, mm-hmm. but it's one of them deep kind. Yeah. It ain't no shallow nothing. And we find we had hit this trail and just luckily it had one of them cable like that you could put, you know, walk with your feet on the cable and hold your hands on the cable. You think, you know, it wasn't fun to go across it. Right. Which I was in good shape. Well, we had 20 people with us or more. I mean, it was just like people was everywhere. And uh, we just, I still hear Clyde thing, huh? Well, everybody but the handler, everybody but the handlers, the judge, and the guide. That. <laughs> They decided it, it's cold. It's in February. They gonna build. They build them a fire, and we start walking. And old Ronnie Scott told him, "Son, look, we gonna get up here in a little spot in a minute, and it, it still seems like it's flat, whatever. But we're we're not gonna hear that dog. So I just want to let y'all know we'll, there'll be an area, probably two hundred yards." That we're not going to hear because it happened to us last night. And I said, I hunted here all the time. Happens to us all the time. And uh, Clyde wasn't one to leave no tree anyway. And he was a good tree dog. Did not, you know, just we get get walking. And sure enough, we got up there and we stopped. Couldn't hear nothing. And he, Ronnie, Ronnie, the guy told him, said, Look, I, I done told y'all, you know, and Comer said, yeah, he's right. So we walked on up about 100 yards, 150 more yards from there. And you can still barely hear him. It took us an hour and 40 minutes just to get around there and get to him. Mm. And uh, I, I'll never forget, uh, you know how uh, people just won hunts. And I know now a $4,000 hunt ain't nothing. But back then, it was, it was the, that was the thing. It was the daddy of them all. Yeah. We walk into that tree, and by the time I go to tie Clyde, Coomer hollers, I got him. My knees just went weak. Man, I couldn't even stand up. Mm. And he tell me, I, I, it, it just, I just fell on that. I didn't cry or nothing. I probably wanted to. And old Coomer come over there to me. He said, boy, it feels good, don't it? And I said, man, he said, I've I been there. He said, just sit here and take it in. You know, he said, it's. A lot of people don't do this. Just take it in. And I did less than 20 something days. We go to Brown Summit, North Carolina, food around. I win that thing back to back. Mm. Win it. And I think now whether it's changed, it may be different now. I don't know. But at the time, I was, I think, one of two or three people that had ever won back to back ones. Uh, now it may be different now. I don't know, but back at that time, it was it was that way. I'm not sure. uh, he was just pie, he was just a dog that you could win with. It wasn't me. It was it. I had a brother in law, Jamie. Good as they come. I ain't got a clue what's going on out there, but I had something going on during that time. I, I was trying to win the national leader. I had to let him take him. And he's caught 350 with me. <laughs> and he ain't got a clue what's going on. I just said, you hear him strike him, you hear him tree tree him. And that's what he did. And won the, oh, won the thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, but anyway, I went, ended up, I got to building a house and had my second kid. And Clyde, I, I had bred him there one year, like I think 72 times, like. A year, a year and three months. And like I said, I gotta give a lot of credit back to Al and Larry Downer for breeding wild time because I'm sure that 
probably made people look well. You know, they bring the world champion to this dog. Must be something. Right. So, and there was, there was one good, I know one real good pup. He had lost his leg that, that uh, Danner had kept that uh, Jeff. Staller. Staller. <clears throat> and they said he was the real deal. Not like they were winning hunts with him. He's just a pup. We didn't even have one front leg. And they said he was a cone trim dude. I never hunted with him, but like I said, I got to building a house and you know, I I ripped none back to the house off a Saturday night to take the family to church and people would be wanting to come on Sunday to breed and it just got to where it it wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. I would have just soon quit the breeding. Now, the money was good, but... Hey, y'all. Tyler here from Coonutton University. I want to talk to you a little bit about extreme dog fuel and what sets them apart. Superior nutrition at the lowest price possible. So they've been told the amount of vitamins and minerals they use in their feeds overkill and that they could reduce cost by incorporating less expensive ingredients in their formula. But they believe the right mix of important ingredients makes a huge difference in your hound's skin, coat, performance, durability, health, and longevity. They promise they'll never change their product to lower the price or to compete with cheap commodity dog foods. All their ingredients are taken from the South Central United States. So go check them out and you can find out more about Extreme Dog Fuel at ExtremeDogFuel.com and find a retailer near you today. Extreme dog fuel, feed it for life. It was just too much, too much at, at one time wearing on me. And, and anybody built a house, do a build a house theirself, they'll tell you it's, it, it, it'll drive you nuts too. Mm-hmm. And all this is going on at the same time. So I went to the national, didn't do no good. Coming home, I just I decided I, I wanted out. Looking back, I wish I never had. But at, at that time, you know how something just hits you. I just wasn't having fun, man. It was the middle of the summer. National was running like in June, June, I think, at that time. And I called Harold and told him I was going to sell. Well, we made up. We drew up an article. And meantime, somehow or another, Timmy Cabal found out. Well, he called Harold, wanting, wanting us just to let him take him. Study, we get so much, he gets so much. Well, I, I that dog wanted to hunt. He, he was a hunting dog. He, he, he was so hard to breed. He was, it, it was, it was hard. He wasn't aggressive. Mm-hmm. It was dark. We couldn't hardly get him to breed. He, he didn't care no more about a female. I mean, I remember hunting one night, uh, scored 400 or something, and a female dripping, walking right beside him. He never made a tree with her. He just didn't care. Right. He didn't care about me. He wasn't no dog that cared about nobody. He, you got him out. He was looking through woods. Just I hated games. Yeah. So come Avery Bell and and Billy, Billy and Adam Donovan had a pup out of Clyde. Well, they had back to me telling you earlier they had brought that female down. Uh, one of them million dollar something dog that million dollar and I, it wasn't gin rummy but it was out of her and it was like the same cross or close to what uh, Elmo they come down and and uh, we they didn't get down till late we bred him at like nine o'clock and they wanted to go hunting we ain't got no hunting around the house so we had to drive all the way to Tuscaloosa so we get down there a little bit before twelve and uh Clyde just put on just a flawless. I think he treated forward. So, but at that time, I wasn't didn't even wasn't thinking about selling or nothing. But anyway, Avery and uh, Billy was calling Harold, you know, back and and I was talking to him too. We were buddies, you know, and they found out I was gonna sell him before I even put the article out. They bought him. Sure did. Uh, it, it was rough. I mean, it. it uh, I thought to myself, you know, I, I knew I still wanted to coon hunt, but I thought, you know, am I screwing up here and I don't ever get another dog I have this much fun with or mm-hmm. whatever? 
But I, I, I got so lucky, it was just unreal. So I, I quit hunting there for, that was like June, about October. I started going with Harold a little bit. He had a he had a pup. I think he was he was out of out of some wimp iron dog, still a river bred dog. He was wanting me to hunt him and take him to super states. Well I got to hunt him and I hit real quick there and I thought, well, man, I can get a pup cheap, you know. And uh it was October. So I decided told Harold, I said, Look, I said, I'll take care of the rest of it. I said, But now the ticket's mine, you know. Go ahead, whatever. So, ended up that world hunt time. There wasn't no hunt around, so we decided to go up to the world hunt. And me hunt that Saturday night. I get up there and I and, and, and I always watched the, uh, Mr. Ellis, J.C. Ellis. He would look at them scorecards over in them books, which I love doing too. You know, how they lay them out over there. I'd get over there looking at them and. And I kept seeing this dog, Clear Creek Chief, coming up. He's out at man tree and two coons ever cast. Two coons ever by himself, two coons. Well, he got in. I can't remember uh, if it was Ashley Hopkins. One of them told me that that dog could be bought. So I get fool around there and I get find find the boy that's handling him, go out there and look at him. And he's out of the Sackett Jr. and Sal Cross. And all them dogs, Rock River Ring, I mean, there was a slew of them. He was out of the same cross. Then I got to talking to him about him. And, uh, you know, he was four years old. And I thought, well, I ain't really been Pop Bunger on him. Well, Pop was, had another dog that he'd won the futurity with. And he favored that dog. And I never forget, Bone had told him, Ronnie Bone had told me, he said, I've been telling him the other dog, the best dog. Anyway, I get to watch these scorecards, and I get to thinking, well, can he, boys, you know, up here. So I said, shoot. I go change the thing. He was, he would talk to, I called a man, and Supposedly he's more than six thousand. Well, when I get him on the phone, he done went to seventy five hundred, and he was kind of rude with me. And he said, uh, "And if you try to jew me, it's eight thousand. So I kind of get aggravated because I had to go up there to the payphone to use. So I come back down. I told Harold and them. I said, "I ain't gonna fool with it." Well, he goes out. He'd got beat out on like he won his. On Friday night, he won his Friday night early and got beat Saturday night. So then comes Saturday night for the open hunt. That boy's still going to hunt him in it. Well, a, a, a buddy of mine that lived down south of Alabama just so happened to him. Well, I'm I'm hunting that little dog that I was telling you about. Uh, his name was Goober. That was his name. So he ended up... Uh, Placing fourth in a, either the Super Stakes or Futurity at one time. Old Jerry, what's Jerry's name? The old Power Pack? Frazier. Frazier. He had bought him and he placed fourth with him. But anyway, get back to Chief. Well, my cast, I come in, I had gotten beat, and I, I was still waiting for that cast to come in. And uh, they come in, and I go where my buddy, I said, well, What about that dog? He said, he got like that, just shook his head, and I thought, well, he ain't done nothing, you know. He said, man, he has put on a shot. He had 575, he'd treat three singles, and they hadn't treated coon. And uh, I go back over to Harold. Well, I didn't have $7,500 with me. And uh, I go back over to Harold, and I said, you don't believe it. I said, I should have bought that dog. I said, probably can't get him now. And, uh, he said, go call him. It's like 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning. I said, all right. I don't know what That man was kind of rude to me already, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I called, and I think I beat him before the boy called to tell him what he had done. And I told him, I said, I, I want the dog, but I said, I'm trying to figure out how to get the money. And uh, 
So we got to talking to Larry Meeks. He had bought PKC at the time, and uh, he let me write a check to him for seventy five hundred. He gave me the cash, and the boy I called him back. And I said I got the money. I said uh, he told me what boy to pay. I paid him, and never forget Clay Young and and David Hurley that passed away now. I I wrote up a thing. Wanted to make sure I got him checked on Monday. That was my only thing. Well, this guy that's handling his wife was attached to this dog, and I didn't know it. So I'm standing there with the dog on the leash, and we're writing up this thing. and And I had Clay. I, I wanted Clay and them to be there to verify I give this money. Matter of fact, I, Clay may have, I may have give the money to Clay to let him count out to that boy. But uh, anyway, Clay and Hurley just witnessed it. Well, after we get through, I turn around. The dog was gone a little bit. I can't remember who come walking by. But they said, man, that ain't a woman out there been screaming in the parking lot, crying, calling your name, how sorry you are for buying that, buying that dog. Now, I don't know what, you know, I don't know how to do this. I, I, and man, I walk out there and this woman is, she's in a chair and she has got, got old chief between her legs and bawling. Now, how do you go up to them and get your dog? I don't know. Man, I told Clay and them, I said, hey, y'all got to come with me. I said, cause I don't know what this woman, you know, but anyway, I got him. I was so scared. And and, and um, I know the guy now. I don't. I don't, I don't know where he's at. His name's Tim. Uh, he may have passed away not long ago. Actually, I even put Chief in Terry Nix's dog box. Afraid it's still in. Afraid it. Yeah, I didn't want to put him in mine. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it just had me nervous. Mm-hmm. You know. But anyway, get on with him. I I, I, I get him and. Uh, First pro hunter of the year. Take it to him and won the whole thing. Right off. And I hunted him mostly in the pro cast. Well, Dennis Taft, me and him kind of partnered up on him. He run him mostly in the open hunts. Well, he had, at, at January, a little bit in January, I was, I was leading the pro division. And Dennis was leading the national leader which we wasn't going to try to do that one and uh, he had like 1800 and something dollars at the time so no let me back on that now because he died in April and he got blasted we had 1800 and something won with him and I had one pro hunt and got him in the semis of another, and he got blasto on us and died. And the last week of the open during September, uh, Bruce Gillum passed. He would have won. He'd won the state later, and didn't hunt half a year. But Bruce passed him right at the end, and won it by just a few dollars. Mm. But that, that I always said, if I could have got that dog. Four times. He was four years old, and I just kind of thought eight years old would be probably maybe if he's twirled his end. Mm-hmm. That dog right there could treat any kind of coon. Uh, his best thing was when they were slick treeing. He could just block block it out. You could see him go by trailing that track out there, pull it right down there. You could take him. You could take him, score a tree, and pull him off and cut him, and he could tree another cone and you see him tree it. Uh, me and Dennis have done another thing probably eight or ten different times. See a cone be sitting in a bottom and see a cone sitting up a tree through yonder, head him toward that cone, and he tree that cone. Tell me, I never had a dog. I never 
Not, no, that was the only one I've ever had do it, and ain't had one since. And, and like I can tell you, I, we broke down several dogs there, and ain't none of them could do it. We were all along. Uh, it's not many people know you. You own one of the most reproducing females there's, there's ever lived. Yeah, stupid me sold her. Could have made a good living off of her for a little while. Yeah. I bought, I got old clone from from Billy Bell. <clears throat> Bad thing about it, if they'd already made that first cross that was doing so good, American Express, mm -hmm. that cross, uh, by herself, man, you could just treat cool. But it seemed like the more dogs you put in a group with her, they got in her head. I don't, I, yeah, it, it, it just, she just could not perform by herself. You want to say, let's go, you trip turn, me a trip turn, I'll take her just as any of them other ones. But now if we start adding second dog, she's all right, but that third and fourth one, for some reason, I don't know. You tell me, and, I, and I, you know how I am about dogs, that they, boys used to laugh back. Before I got Clyde and figured figured dogs like I tell you, he taught lot, taught me a lot. Uh, I take these dogs out, buy them. I go that night with him. And he looked sorry. They'd start laughing. They knew he was for sale the next day. <laughs> I'd, I'd tell him he if somebody I can call right now, I'll buy him right now. They can have him tonight. I ain't got to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I I get rid of them and just. I mean, I just go through them. That's why I had so many of them. I mean, it's like the DD female that Shaq. Are you in the market for a new dog box and just don't know which one to get? That's why I encourage you to go check out GNR Cedar Dog Boxes, especially if you're wanting something different. GNR Sear Dog Box was established in 2016 when two avid hunters wanted a dog box that was affordable and great looking at that. They provide a high quality, handmade, lightweight box to the customers. They take pride in the fact that their boxes are fully cedar, which will last a lifetime in all types of weather conditions. Cedar also ensures your hounds stay a little warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. You can find out more about GNR Cedar Dog Boxes on Facebook. G find them at GNR Cedar Dog Boxes or give them a call at 615-962-5266. They're located in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, USA. Uh, I bought her from from Larry Duke Duke Pru, uh Ryan Krausen had placed second with her in the Super Stakes and something happened on the cast. I, I can't remember what he said it was, but should have won the cast. Uh that was a fun dog to hunt there. She could she could she could run a coon too and just she was just fun to hunt. Mm -hmm. She just had that personality to I was telling you Clyde just didn't care. Uh she had this personality about her. Uh I ended up I uh I always Nikki was always a <clears throat> we never hunted together as far as just hunting together, but I always called Ronnie Nickens just to pick his brain, you know? Because he had some of the best and and, and he would always help me find me a dog if I was looking at him. He kind of knew my price range and what I wanted. And uh, it, it, I don't it, like I said, I didn't live close to him. It kind of bothered me when he died here not long ago. But I bought a coon waxer from him, and he told me everything. Sorry about that dog. He was just straight about that dog as could be. And he was another one. Ronnie had tried to make him just be so independent, just beating on him. He screwed his mind up. But now, by himself, tree and cones, <laughs> you can ask, ask old, old Sluggo about him. Ask some of them that, ask before I had him. 
uh, Bang, what's his name? Um, Casey. Casey. Ask Casey. Casey had him, actually. It's out of one of Casey's females. But he had the mouth, the go. He had the looks. Had coons when he treed. Little, little tough on the tree. Not just awful. Uh, I had him there for a while. I had bought... Uh, a lot of people probably hunting PKC remember a female named Gurley that Joe Tinsman had up uh, Indiana that won a lot, won some pro hunts. Uh, I got her down here though. I think I may have got her at a bad time. He had just bred her. He made her grand night. It never lost a cast. Went straight through grand night. Just eight, whatever, eight hunts. Probably at the time, I'm guessing. One, every one of them. He bred her to track, man. I had bought her before she had the pups. And so when I got her, matter of fact, I got I got two pup, two or three pups with the deal. And they wasn't but five or six weeks old. But So I get to hunting with Early, and um, she just made two down here. And, and, and I, 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 a lot of, I don't know what it is about. And I bet you guys up north say our dogs probably get up there and water around. Probably, and they probably do. I don't know. Man, she she just, she do everything right to have a coon. Mm. So I guess she done everything wrong. Mm. <laughs> she didn't have what I wanted. Yeah. Uh, so I had to give a pretty good price for her. And I just sold her back half price. And two weeks later, he's got her in the AKC Final Four, about to win the world hunt with her. <laughs> went on, went on that same year and won like twenty seven thousand dollars with her. So some of them just don't work. They just below that Mason Dixon. Uh, something about it. Uh, yeah, I got to looking there at one time. Uh, I got to. Uh, Got to talking to Billy Bell. I've been look. I, I got out of a dog and at, after the girly and I don't know. I had a couple of other dogs probably right in there. Uh, and uh, I got to talking to Billy. And I asked him where one was. And he said, "Well," and he described him. The word he used was powerful. And. I tried to find out what dog it was, and he told me, Hell Billy the Kid, Clay Young had it. So, uh, I got to, Clay had just won second with him the year before at the Super Stakes, and it was coming up. Well, it was, actually, World Hunt. He may have been already up there, because I didn't pay him till then, but anyway, uh, he's got got kid, and um, me and him made a deal. Well, he took him on up to the world hunt, got him in on Monday night, first night. Uh, can't remember if he won his first cast on back again on Friday night or not, but I don't think he did. He he, he drew the dog. That dog. What was the dog that won the world hunt from Coleman up there? Roller. Josh Griffin. Roller beat him, but, but I think it was a coon tree, you know. I mm-hmm. think maybe Kid treat a couple of coons and, and that it, somehow or another, you know, it wasn't like it just a, a beating, but, but Roller won, won the cast and went on win the world hunt because I went up there to the world hunt and that's where I paid paid him for him at the world hunt. And uh, I got him, kept him for, I don't know, a few months. He, I like, had a coon accurate, a uh, few things that just wasn't my style. I sold him to uh, Reggie Byron, and uh, after that, though, uh, a buddy of mine, a lot of, a lot of people know now, because he was around probably a lot of PKC hunts, Gary Elliott. And uh, don't know about it. Probably people know it, but Gary Elliott keeps as good a coon dogs as 
is if he can find it, it's a good one. I mean, right. he, it might not be. He's going to try to get the best he can get. Mm-hmm. And go back to back when I first got to hunt much with Gary a few times. He had a little dog named Speck. Man, I begged him to let me take that dog and go hunt. Because we go down there and he... October, at that time, coon sitting up trees and stuff. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. And he was so quick. Uh, I mean, I've seen I seen him one night, tree six singles, just, and he's never going to be with a dog. You go in there to him, you look like a little yard dog, sound like a yard dog. He'd be a scratching and backed off the tree about 10 foot of scratching. As far up every tree you went to, mm-hmm. and I, and I thought, man, if he would just let me take that dog to the world hunt, and he, but he wasn't into it at that time, right? You know? uh, and but now Gary's got probably down south Alabama. He's got his you you he got all kind of places. It's just unreal hunting, unreal. So he got down to uh, probably owned another few dogs in there. But I bought old history repeats and stuff, which there's two of them. Uh, but the one that you've been hunting, son, and he he just had that has that desire. I'd love to have had him when he was two years old. It's hard to tell what we could have done with him. Right. You know, we didn't get him until he was seven. What is he now? You still hunting him? Eleven. He's Eleven years old. And still he's going. Got him semi out of a truck. Just just... Got him. Yeah. You've been hunting him. But man, there's been several other dogs back through there that I, that dogs that got final for uh, tree talking hoss that won the NKC World Hunt. I had him at one time. Uh, man, I hate that. It sounds funny because I've been through so many of them, but <laughs> I was so, it took me till Clyde to start realizing that, hey, they have bad nights too, you know? Right. If they have more good ones than bad ones. You are probably ahead of the game. Uh it took me I, I used to be so impatient. If you'll notice you ain't heard me talk about pups because I don't can't do it. I've never seen you. I just can't do it. I want one good dog. Uh I would love to but I sit around and think, boy, I'm gonna get me that pup and train that thing. Shh. I get him in about two weeks I'm ready to kill it. I know that's this pup out of Pete that I've had, it's 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 been a learning curve. She's she's taught me a lot, and it's you have to have patience. Oh, well, there you go. It's, it's, it's when you think making that turn, it's they they start doing something so, else. You yeah. got you got to start training on for something else. It's always something. Well, I tell you what, somebody told me one time, it was Ronnie Bone, and he was hunting Cracker at the time. Cracker was probably ten or so. Was in a pro cast, and somebody. On the cast, asked asked Bone something about training something I don't remember about training dogs, and this is something that's always stuck with me. And it's the truth: if you're compete, if you're trying to compete to really win, you'll be training that dog till it dies. Mm-hmm. I don't care if he's ten; you'll still be training that dog if you're competing. And wanting to win hunts, you will be. And he told told that boy. He said, "You'll never stop training one." If you, it's the same thing I just said. That's exact, basically the words he used, and that's always stuck with me. You know, if you if you're really out there wanting to win a hunt, you got to go out there like you're hunting a hunt when you're pleasure hunting. You practice like you play. Set them up for everything. That's right. Yeah. And, and, uh, if you don't, you're just wasting your time. These guys, that, you know, they, they so many of these younger guys, I look in, um, I look, I look, uh, a lot of people know, a lot of people don't know. I've, I've had seven spinal surgeries and, uh, it's got to where I can't last, what, three, four years? I ain't, I ain't been able to go. And my buddy here, Mason's took, Took good care of me as far as keeping what dogs I had and keeping me excited, at least getting to hear about it. Uh, now he's moved to Tennessee, so, and I, you know, you can't just trust anybody. I don't want to go 
And you know what's I know there's a guy out there paying all this money for these dogs, but you know, I don't mind paying fifteen so for one, but I don't want to give fifteen thousand dollars and give it to somebody that ain't got a clue what's you know what I mean? Right. And I ain't gonna do it. So it's just there ain't just a handful I would even yeah, let trust. Let keep mine right for more than a couple of days. So. And but you've kept me, you know, telling me the stories, and I still get to hear and hear it some, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I look on the I look on the board, and I and I guess I'm exaggerating. I look on the PKC website ten or fifteen times a day, but I got to looking as we're sitting here right now. The, the super states was running, and I got to looking in the pictures, and there's very few people in there that I. A lot of new faces. It's a lot of new guys, a lot of younger guys coming up, uh, and seems like there's a lot more good handlers out there now. It ain't, you know, used to there was four or five. You go to, I can remember being at pro hunt. Once I got over being scared of Junior Jackson, sitting around <laughs> talking to him one night, one evening, and and the, and Doug was, was there, and uh, you know we got to talking, got to looking around, and, and they but at that time you could say four or five dogs here that that you you know any one of the sixty four or whatever can win it, but there ain't but four or five here that you put your money on and say. Right. You know, one of them right there is probably where you're going to have to go through, you know. It seems like uh, back then, just looking and reading it, one particular dog dominated more often than it does now. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 you got it. I, I don't know. It's, uh, I thought about it myself, and I look. There's a young boy coming up now, man, and, and, uh, and I, don't, I don't know. Another thing is, it's, it's, it's just like I was talking a while ago. I'm a whole lot well off than I was as far as money back then. My wife's got, actually, she works three jobs and makes good, pretty good money. But still, I can't see where all these people are coming from that can pay $4,000 to hunt a hunt and, it, and arguing over because they didn't get in or didn't get it, you know, didn't get an entry. Right. Man, that just they blows got, my mind. Where's all this money coming from? And they got life more figured out than we do, I guess. <sighs> Biden don't let Biden ain't doing me that good. I can <laughs> tell you that. Old Brandon ain't doing good for me. Let's <laughs> start winding it down. Uh, right. What about uh, one, one last question? I like to ask this one: the top three ever drawn out with or hunted with? Just three that really sticks sticks in your mind. Oh, uh, man. I would start off probably Gouger was probably one of the first. Uh, like I said, I don't know what he got, what he did when he was older, six years old. But I can tell you this: when when Junior Jackson had that dog, you knew you when when you seen Gouger on, you had your hands full. He had a mouth. Had a coons, he just made you want him. I wanted him, <laughs> but you know, I knew it, I couldn't try to buy that dog. But uh, that's when I had Clyde, and, and it was funny as me and him was going to draw each other, it, it was going to go through one of us, you know. And, and, and to get back to where I, I meant to tell this about Clyde, and this is something that I, I wish I'd have got in there a minute ago, but I'm gonna stick it back in there. The year that I run Clyde in pro division, I, I didn't have enough vacation days, so I didn't get to go to but six out of 13 pro hunts. And out of the six pro hunts, I won two, finished second in one, and got him in the semis of the other. Well, it come down to the last pro hunt in Kentucky. I've got an entry, but also the UKC world hunt is going on, and it's right here at Boaz. So the plan we had made was we was going to go hunt the UKC hunt, 
if I get put out that first night, we're going to take one off to the to the pro hunt. Because the pro division, there's only one dog that can beat me, and it's got to win the whole pro hunt. And it was a dog junior in them hunted mauled. Jukebox Maud, a lot of people probably remember her. She had won a couple of pro hunts during the year. She had 8,000 won. She couldn't finish second to beat me. She had to win the whole thing. Like I said, I didn't get to hunt the six. They hunted 13. And uh, so I get up there at the World Hunt with Clyde. I don't know, it was kind of weird, kind of embarrassing a little bit to me. Birmingham News come up, and they had a big article. Clyde was picked. I don't know who told him that or who they talked to in the bill, whatever. But I've seen it. It's it's uh it's still hanging in the Jasper, Alabama it, club. Yep. Uh, I did have a. I wish I could get one. I need to get me one. I did have it, but I don't know if I can wear that now. But they had him picked to win it, and uh, and he was on. I won the zone over in Georgia, and I mean he was clicking. I've got him down now into the uh, final 15 dogs. And we have got to where we can get permits to Wheeler. Mason sitting here knows how Wheeler. Big bottoms, pretty e- easy walking. A lot of people probably might be listening. It's been in there. It's, it's, it's great hunting. Well, my guide takes us over to a neighborhood. We pull around to the basement of a house in a nice neighborhood. And there's a holler behind this house. Well, on the other side of the holler, they just strip of houses too. And I'm hunting Clyde. Knowing, I don't know where he's going to go, you know, because I know he's not going to, he, he would dodge lights. He wouldn't. So I ended up. Uh, nobody won our cast. We didn't tree a coon. We found Clyde treed right after the hunt up a bush with a coon in it. I laid up in the middle of the paved road because I knew if I could get him in that final cast, you know, that was going to put me into the final cast. And like I'm telling you, Mason, he it was just, he was good most of the time, but he was just, man, I don't know if that time it, something just was just clicking right. And, and, and I just, uh, high scoring dog both nights at the zones, just everywhere I took him right along that in September for some reason. I don't know, uh, not for Simmons, uh, Baker, no, Musky, Musky dies. dies. I don't know if, if he was just good that you know, I don't know, whatever it was. I laid up in the middle of the pay road and cried because <laughs> I, you know, I thought, man, I get this close to a world hunt. Well, now I can't get to the PKC hunt, and I guess who wins the pro hunt? Mom. Mom. So instead of me going from last year winning the national male in the open division to the next year winning the pro division, I ended up second. But, I mean, I, he had a great, you know, six hunts. You get in three final fours, win two of them, and second in one, and and they got to beat you the last hunt. That's pretty good. Right. Uh, we get back to the top three. Goucher, every time I drew him, he looked good. Even even getting beat, he, he looked good. You know, it, it was never like, and he just didn't, it, it, he just, he always looked good. And uh, another time at a, at a pro hunt in Mississippi over in the river bottom, was uh, Hardwood Henry. Jeff Reckless was hunting him at the time. He put on a show. I was hunting an English dog for Harold that, that was a pretty good dog. I I got him in the world, at the PKC world. He had got trees back across the road, and, and we were, it was echoing. We couldn't tell which way to walk. We walked around in circles trying to get to mine. In the meantime, Henry, we cut him from tree to tree, and he's three, four minutes, he's treed again. Three or four minutes. And I finally, I withdrew, because he done got five-something on the card, and, and just a little bit. I mean, he is just, 
I, it, it was like he was glued to these. I mean, it was just like, bang, bang. I went one night hunt, and which I know he was a great dog anyway, because he won. You know how much he won. He was another one. I'll tell you a story about one mother dog. I, I and I don't know how good he was all the time, but we were at a we was at a pro hunt. I got beat out somehow or another. Didn't didn't hunt on Saturday night. So I'm gonna hunt the open hunt on Saturday night. And uh, it was this, it was the year I was running for the for the mail, I think. Well, you know how you go. We were all young. You know how you go up there and you look at the cars and you say, "Oh man, you drew you drew old Gallagher or you drew Henry," <laughs> laughing and aggravating, you know, whatever. So I'm walked up there, and, and I know these guys don't know who I am standing there. I'm looking at the cards. Well, one of them points over. And he, he sees Clyde on on that card and I don't I don't have it in my hand or up and he starts gouging his buddy, Ah, you do wild Clyde, you hit for it tonight. And it was a da- a dog named Slam Dunk on Dan Junior. Well, let me tell you what. When we get out on that cast, he slam dunked us all. He treed four or five singles. Mine's treed one. He's no he scored five. Tell you, he, he got treated again way in there after the hunt. And I was so impressed, I tied mine up to the tree up there on the side of the field and went with him. Because I said, man, I got to see this again. And this little old dog would tree in there. And the first time he tree, I was laughing because he, ooh, 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 ooh. And then he'd go 30 seconds. And he, I thought, that dog ain't going to stay tree. Come to find out. Same blood as Slam It Lefty that uh, Jeff used to hunt. He, as far as one night, uh, and then uh, I'd have to throw Clyde and Chief in there as far as, you know, being in that kind of caliber dogs to me. Uh, but it's been fun, buddy. You know, been, been a lot of nonsense, but I, I could tell you some more, more stories about about old Harold Edwards and people would laugh till they cried some of the stupid <laughs> stuff crazy. Maybe we can get on here again and get more yeah. time and oh, uh, yeah. we can just do a, maybe we can get Harold over here himself. That would be fun. That would be fun. You would, you would get a kick out of it, I'm telling you. Well, I'm sure everybody wants to know uh how long are you going to hold on to that Clyde ceiling? Hey, yeah, you keep doing that. I'm going to get you for it one day. <laughs> uh, well. I wish I had some. I can get, I'd make me some money. I know that because every time you put it on there, I get 50 calls from it. I ain't got none, so you don't nobody call, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to wrap her up. It's knocking on midnight. We're going we to call it a night. Anything right. else you want to say? Ah, uh, man, I just wish I could get out, back out there with everybody. It would sure be. I miss it bad. Just, I got a couple more things that are going to try to put a stimulator on me in my back, and maybe if that don't work, I guess I'll be sitting listening. That's all I can do. You come right around with me, listen. And I appreciate it. Probably ain't nobody going to care nothing much about this, but it's been fun. Yeah. We'll sign off. We're out. We are proud to have Conkey's Outdoors as a sponsor of CHU Podcast. Conkey's is your complete hunting and hound supply store. They carry brands like Garmin, Daltra, Dan's, and even Summit Tree Stands and much, much more. Whether you're in the market for a new thermal or a new hunting rifle, Conkey's has it all. They even offer financing options. Being a family-run business with customer service that is second to none, it's no wonder why Conkey's is the best in the business. So go check them out at Conkey'sOutdoors.com or find them on Facebook at Conkey's Outdoors. I really hope y'all enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you like what you heard here, go on over to Facebook. Give us a like, at Coon Hunting U. Also, go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out. And remember, if you need a new hunting light, do not overlook Superior. They make an awesome light, best customer service in the business. Man, their walking light and double red is the brightest I've ever seen. 
Use coupon code CHU podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. You can find the link in the description box below this. Coon Hunting University is a product of Audio Hound Productions. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.